Good evening and welcome to the Capitol Report on Entity Television. I'm Steve Lance. Here's a look at what's coming up. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel, surpassing Sir Winston Churchill as a foreign leader who addressed the joint session of Congress on the most occasions, with the Israeli leader's messages to the American people. And in light of Netanyahu's address, what's at stake for the nation of Israel? And what can we expect from his meetings with President Biden, now candidate Kamala Harris, and former President Trump in the coming days? Victoria Coates of the Heritage Foundation will join us to assess. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivering a historic address to a joint session of Congress while thousands of protesters gather around Capitol Hill, demanding for his arrest. Our Washington correspondent Louise Martinez has more. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has delivered a historic fourth speech to a joint session of Congress. Netanyahu has now surpassed Sir Winston Churchill as the foreign leader to have had that honor the most times. During his address, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu thanked the U.S. for the military support they've received so far and appealed to U.S. lawmakers like Sir Winston Churchill did during World War II to deliver the tools to finish the job. Our enemies are your enemies. Our fight is your fight. And our victory will be your victory. Democrats had threatened to boycott Wednesday's speech from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Vice President Kamala Harris. The president of the Senate instead participated in a campaign event in Indiana. But Congresswoman, Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz from Florida, for example, made the best of today's opportunity. I'm proud to be serving on the escort committee, an opportunity that I'm going to use to make sure that I relay uh, to the prime minister the absolute necessity to make sure that we can finalize and he will agree to the deal uh, that President Biden and Vice President Harris have proposed. It's important to note that Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, the first Palestinian American lawmaker, did participate in Wednesday's address and held a sign that said war criminal. Republicans instead showed strong support for Israel and their war against Hamas. Many Democrats are boycotting uh, the presence of Benjamin Netanyahu. It should not be partisan. It should not be political. Uh, Republicans stand strongly with Israel. That's been evident. We're excited to see Benjamin Netanyahu today. Protesters gathered around the Capitol demanding the immediate arrest of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. According to the National Park Services, in between 5,000 and 10,000 protesters showed to Wednesday's event. <laughs> Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also met on Wednesday with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, with House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, and with the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. On Thursday, Netanyahu will meet with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in separate meetings. And on Friday, Netanyahu will meet with former President Donald Trump in Mar-a-Lago, Florida. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Luis Eduardo Martinez, NTD News. The Israeli Prime Minister's address to Congress comes during a week of historical political change right here in the United States. So what are the implications of those changes for Israel in its relationship with the U.S.? Joining me now to assess is Victoria Coates, national security and foreign policy expert at the Heritage Foundation. Victoria, it's great to have you with us. Good to see you too, Steve. So Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressing a joint session of Congress today, a historic address at that for the fourth time. What are the key points uh, of his address that you took away and what kind of support do you think he's ultimately seeking from the United States? Yeah, it's a, it was a very forceful, almost vintage address from Prime Minister Netanyahu, who has, of course, uh, addressed the United States Congress a number of times. And this this is a very high state moment for both of our countries. And I think one of the key points he made was that, you know, the, the war is taking place in Israel right now, but this is not just a war for Israel, that when they shout death to America, the enemies of Israel's or death to Israel, rather, the, these enemies will then shout death to America. And so we have to realize this is a war on both of us. And we just at Heritage saw this afternoon the three American flags in front of Union Station down the block be ripped from their flagpoles and burnt as the protesters shouted Allahu Akbar. This is very much directed against the United States as well as Israel. And But as the prime minister said, uh, the good news is 
that when Israel and the United States stand together, that becomes a we win, they lose proposition. And I think that should be the attitude of all Americans who value this relationship, but also just value America. So, Victoria, Netanyahu and President Biden are scheduled to meet on Thursday. What do you think are the key issues that they will be discussing, particularly with regard to the ceasefire with Hamas? And how significant is this meeting for both leaders at this stage in their respective terms? Well, it's, it's really unprecedented. I, I don't think we've seen anything like this where a president has said that he's not going to run for reelection but still is is having state meetings. Uh, you know, it, it's not clear what they really have to talk about at this point, what decisions Biden is is making. So it's it's a deeply unsettling time for all, again, for all Americans to try to figure out what's happening. I guess we'll hear from the president later on tonight what his what his plans are. But for the prime minister to come here, meet with the now uh, official candidate of the Democrat Party, who's the vice president, meet with the sitting president, and then go down to Mar-a-Lago to meet with the former president. It seems does not seem exactly like one-stop shopping for, for him. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how this unprecedented situation plays out. <laughs> it, you, you point that out. He's not just meeting President Biden. He, he is meeting uh, Kamala Harris and President former President Trump, uh, both candidates in, in both major parties for 2024. How do you think this is being perceived by Hamas? Well, Hamas is unfortunately emboldened because what they hear from the Biden administration is that they're going to get a two-state solution out of this. They hear very strong statements out of Vice President Harris of support uh, that that she is much more concerned about the activities of the Israeli government than she is about Hamas. And I think they would see this as their point of, of strongest opportunity because President Trump was very frank in some of his remarks recently that he is not gonna tolerate the fact that these people are still holding Americans hostage. That's what's so outrageous about permitting these kinds of pro-Hamas demonstrations in the streets while, while they are holding our people hostage. So I think, I think Hamas is gonna to try to get as much as they can out of the Biden administration while it's still in office because they know if President Trump is reelected, they know what that sheriff does when he's in town. Just lastly, real uh, briefly, I was going to ask you about it. You raised the very important point that there are still Americans uh, inside of Gaza from the October 7th attack being held hostage. What should the strategy be for the U.S. and Israel uh, to secure the release of these hostages, these Americans? No, absolutely. From the day one, the president should have been much, much more forceful, forceful saying that there are going to be no concessions for Hamas, no proposed ex state for them while they're holding Americans hostage. Give them back now and then maybe we will have a conversation then. But they've spent the last 10 months giving encouragement to Hamas, not making them feel any pressure for this. So I think the message to Hamas that is, is from President Trump, you know, give them back or else. And unfortunately, I don't think our current leadership will deliver that. Heritage Foundation, Victoria Coates, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. And within just a few blocks of the Capitol, demonstrators taking over the streets, most of them protesting against Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's visit. NTD Sam Wong hit the streets to hear from both sides. What are we here for today? We're here because Benjamin Netanyahu, the president of the entity of Israel, is in town to give a speech to Congress, and he should not be here, and we are here to try to prevent him from speaking to our Congress. I'm here for any voice that wants to speak out, to speak out, regardless of the side of the issue they're on. Our veterans are dying on the streets by heroin, and they don't care about that. They care about giving money to foreign countries like Ukraine and Israel, for America first. Free Gaza to end the genocide to let the U.S. government know the will of the people. Netanyahu is a war criminal, and Congress should not be recognizing him. And as Americans and as Jews, you know, we're outraged. You know, I understand totally about the Israeli hostages that should be freed as soon as possible. But, I mean, someone said one evil doesn't fix another evil. We in English say peace. The Jews say shalom, the Muslims say salam, peace, salam, shalom. But there aren't very many people on the pro-Israel side that have the courage to come out. But I am not a Jew with trembling knees, and that's what I'm here to say. What's your message now to members of Congress who are welcoming uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu into the Capitol? Shame. End the arms embargo, or start an arms embargo. 
stop selling arms and send him to The Hague. Do you have any hope for Vice President Harris in terms of breaking peace in the Middle East? Well, I think, I think America is in a unique place and hopefully maybe President Harris can do something about it. She's new. We want hope. We have to have, you can't give up hope. Hopefully, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm not uh, confident, really. She hasn't said anything to me to, to win my vote. Whoever ends up being president next can help resolve peace in the Middle East in a way that is in favor of the Israelis and the Palestinians, but, you know, we have to defend ourselves. We're being attacked at seven borders. So and coming up, why he dropped out of the race and what is next for the sitting president of the United States. That's what President Biden is set to explain to the nation tonight. What we know about his address and what the latest polls are showing about a race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump. And the FBI director today telling Congress everything currently known about the gunman who shot former President Trump. That and more when we return.